welcome to this introductory session on thermodynamics. Through a series of video lectures, we would be understanding certain concepts, certain vital concepts of thermodynamics. Thermodynamics has been introduced to us in our school days in your physics text. And we generally, as students, feel curious about what this thermodynamics has a relevance to. So, in this short video, I would try to point out exactly what is the relevance of studying this course, the thermodynamics course, how it is useful for us as a mechanical engineers to apply these concepts in the day-to-day -day life. So, I had focused my lecture on thermal systems and how to look at the thermal systems from the thermodynamic perspective. As I said, this is an introductory lecture and the objective is, is to understand certain concepts which you already studied in the school days as to what exactly is a thermal system, how do you differentiate an open system from a closed system and what is an isolated system. When you look at the system, Obviously, there is something called a surrounding. How to look at the energy flow between the system and surrounding. And then you would be looking at certain practical energy systems, uh, thermal systems. And you would be looking at the energy flows across this. So this is the objective of the video which I had planned to. Uh, outcome of this uh, lecture would be that uh, you would be in a position to understand what is a thermodynamic system, understand how to choose a system boundary or if it is open system how to look at the control volume, how to look at the energy flows across that system and then look at the mass energy transfer across certain well, well known systems like your heat engine or a heat pump and a refrigerator. So, this is what we are planning to do. System, when you are talking about a system, that comes to our mind a confined space which we are interested in analyzing. So, system is not a very fixed portion. It is basically anything which we are interested in analyzing from a thermodynamic perspective. So, for example, if I am interested in analyzing uh, IC engine, internal combustion engine, then the internal combustion engine becomes my system and everything around that engine becomes the surrounding. Or if I want to analyze a gas turbine, then the gas turbine becomes my system and everything around that gas turbine becomes a surround. A system, generally, when you are talking about, we need to talk about its boundary, which separates the system from the surrounding. So when you are talking about system, thermodynamic system, essentially it comes with the surrounding, and then a separation comes in the form of boundary. System, as I said, could be an open system, a closed system, or an isolated system. By open system, we mean that the mass enters and mass leaves the system. So if you are allowing, if there is an entry of the mass into the system and the mass is exiting the system, then we can say that the system is an open system. So whenever there is a mass transfer across the system boundary, that system becomes the open system. If there is no mass transfer, if there is no mass transfer across the system boundary, but there is some energy transfer across the system boundary, energy gets in, energy goes out, okay, so whatever way, that system becomes a closed system. So closed system is the system where there is no mass transfer, but energy transfer happens across the system boundary. 
an isolated system you cannot have the mass transfer you cannot have the energy transfer so in a way that system is isolated from the surrounding so the surrounding is not having any impact on the system because there is no energy transfer via mass transfer and there is no energy transfer per se between the system and the surrounding so generally in your real engineering life we would come across many open system systems and we would be interested in analyzing those uh, we might also come across certain closed systems uh, for example if you take a piston cylinder arrangement and assuming that there are no walls in that uh, cylinder then that system becomes a closed system open system there are number of examples for example if you take a steam turbine where the steam enters the system and the steam leaves the system that becomes a open system a system open system could be closed at times for example when we are discussing the heat engine i'll elaborate on that more that if you are talking about a piston cylinder arrangement where during one stroke you have the walls open and in the other stroke the walls are closed so when the walls are open that system would behave as a open system when the walls are closed the system would be as a uh, closed system so same system would open as a uh, would be as a open system and same system might be as a closed system depending upon whether there is a mass transfer or not when you are talking about open system generally we use an approach called as a control volume approach so what is this control volume approach it is a, because you know that in the open system there would be entry of the mass and exit of the mass so what we do is that we concentrate our attention when you are doing an analysis basically why are we interested in a system approach we are interested in system approach because we are interested in knowing what is happening to the system because of the effects on the surrounding so what because if there is a open system it would be difficult to analyze and because there is no fixed mass in this so what we would be doing is that because the mass would come in mass would go out so better way of analyzing is that instead of concentrating on our attention or analysis on mass we concentrate our attention on a fixed volume okay so for example in this case you see that there is some mass entering there is some energy flow also and energy flow out energy flow in and uh, the mass is leaving also so what we do is that if i want to analyze this system i i imagine a boundary i imagine a boundary okay and this boundary for example in this sketch you see the dotted portion is a boundary okay so this boundary we will call it as a control surface this control surface would enclose a certain volume in it and that is called as a control volume so we would be interested in analyzing analyzing the energy flows and the mass flows okay why is we the control volume okay so this control volume is our area of attention okay this is where we would be concentrating our attention on and then once your control volume is fixed then we would be looking at the inlet streams for example this is the inlet stream some section 1 1 we could say uh, or 1 2 section 1 2 whatever okay and there is some mass which is entering this control volume so i would be interested in analyzing this similarly you see that there is certain mass which is leaving this control volume so i'll be interested in knowing this okay there will be some energy which is getting into this control volume for example heat is getting into this control volume and there is certain energy which is leaving this control volume so work is leaving this control volume so you generally find that there is an energy flow and when you are talking about energy flows if it is a closed system the energy flows is only by heat transfer and work transfer so it is only heat transfer and work transfer which should change the properties of a closed system if it is an open system along with the heat transfer and work transfer you might have an energy flow uh, because of the mass which is getting in and mass which is leaving out so this that is also one difference between open system and closed system what is that in the closed system the properties would change because of the energy transfer namely which are the two energy transfers we are talking about the heat transfer and work transfer note that from a thermodynamic perspective we talk about heat as a energy transfer and work as also an energy transfer so the 
the properties would change of for a closed system via the heat transfer and work transfer. For an open system, the properties would change not only because of the heat transfer and work transfer, but also because of the mass transfer. So this has to be clearly understood. So when there is a mass transfer, we need to look at the control volume and we need to first define the control surface. So this is a very vital concept, especially when you are analyzing the open system, this concept will be used again and again. I look at certain uh, thermodynamic systems for understanding why, uh, why the thermodynamic analysis becomes useful. So a very famous uh, and well-known example of a thermodynamic system is a heat engine. Now what is a heat engine? If you take an example of a four-stroke engine, four-stroke engine. Okay, so you all know that in the four-stroke engine, you will find that certain mass would enter this engine right uh, certain mass would enter this engine during the intake stroke so mass would enter this engine during the intake stroke and mass would leave this engine during the exhaust stroke right so when there is an intake stroke and when the piston is moving uh, away from the top dead center and when there is an exhaust stroke that is when the piston is moving towards the top dead center you would find that there is a mass exchange between this system now the system becomes the engine and the surrounding and the surrounding so look at this so your heat engine now for example this is the petrol engine which has been shown here which is a spark plug so you would have a mass transfer along uh, uh, from the system to the from the surrounding to the system when there is a suction stroke and from the system to the surrounding when there is an exhaust stroke you would also have an energy transfer now when this energy transfer happens so the energy transfer as i said happens along with the mass transfer but it also happens even if there is no mass transfer. For example, when there is a compression stroke and power stroke, compression stroke and power stroke, what you will say is that the walls are closed. This walls, the intake wall and exhaust walls are closed. So during the compression stroke and power stroke, this system would behave as a closed system. During the intake stroke and exhaust stroke, this system would behave as an open system. So when there is a compression stroke and power stroke, what happens is that during the compression stroke, there is a work transfer because you need to compress, means you need to move the piston. So there is a work transfer from the surrounding to the system. That is how you have to look at it. Okay. There is a negative one. Compression stroke is a negative one. Okay. So there is a work transfer from the surrounding to the system. And when there is a power stroke, it means that uh, there is a positive work being done now in this case. So work is transferred from the system to the surrounding. Work is done by the system to the surrounding okay so what you will find is that during the power stroke there is a work transfer between the system and the surrounding and this is away from the system that is there is a work transfer from the system to the surrounding whereas the negative work is the compression stroke when there is a work transfer from the surrounding to the system okay surrounding to the system because this is a heat engine you know that uh, a petrol engine or a diesel engine uh, it is going to produce net work output. Okay, you are burning certain fuel and you are getting certain net work output. So when you are burning certain fuel, there is a combustion phenomena and energy is released. So when the energy is released from a thermodynamic perspective, what you say is that there is a heat transfer to the system. Okay, when you are saying that there is a combustion phenomena happening, you, what you say is that from a thermodynamic perspective, this engine, if it is a system, and because it is an open system, there is a heat transfer from the surrounding to the system. This is the heat transfer. This is the energy transfer. And when you are talking about the net work output, okay, when doing the power stroke, you say that there is a work transfer from the engine, from the engine to the surrounding. So the heat is getting converted to work, and that is called as a heat engine. What is heat engine? Heat engine is a device which operates on a thermodynamic cycle and it produces work okay by transfer of heat so there is a transfer of heat and the net transfer of heat results in the production of work okay that is one of the important thermal system and we had looked into the energy flows of this uh, heat engine similarly other heat engine is a steam power plant which is a, also an important um, important thermodynamic system so if you look at this total system now this total system this becomes a system boundary 
this is a system boundary. Now, what is happening? You need to look at the energy flows across the steam power plant. You know what is a steam power plant? We all know what is steam power plant. With a steam power plant, there is a boiler where you are burning the coal, if it is a coal fired boiler or any other fuel, and the water boils, it is converted to steam. At steam powers the steam turbine, and you are getting certain work out of it. The exhaust steam is condensed in the condenser where there is a heat rejection, and the condenser that is water is pumped back to the boiler for pumping. You need to supply certain work. So look at the work transfer now. Because this is a closed system, this is a closed system. You look at this, this is a closed system. You will find that there is only the energy transfer happening. So, which is the energy transfer happening here? There is the energy transfer during pumping. There is the energy transfer during conversion of water to steam. There is the energy transfer when the steam is expanded in the steam turbine. And there is the energy transfer when the steam gets condensed to pump. Now, what are the forms of energy transfer? Look at this. When you are converting the water to steam, you need to supply certain heat. Heat, okay. This is a closed loop, so you don't have a mass transfer. Look at it. Okay. This is a closed loop. Uh, it is an ideal cycle. Uh, we need not supply any external water. Right? So the water is recirculated and there is no mass transfer across the system boundary. So it becomes a closed system. Okay. So in this closed system, there is only the energy transfer. Energy transfer. In the boiler, it's tube in, and there is a heat rejection that is energy transfer from the condenser. So Q out. So the net energy transfer, heat transfer is Q in minus Q out. That is a net heat transfer. And what about the work transfer? There is a work transfer, positive work, the system doing work on the surrounding, and there is a negative work. That is the work done by the surrounding or the system. So what is the net work output? The net work output is the turbine work, turbine work minus the pump work. So the energy transfers across this closed system is either by the heat transfer or by the work transfer or by heat transfer and work transfer. Okay. So in a heat engine, there is both the heat transfer as well as work transfer. Right, so this becomes a closed system. Now, let us forget for a moment that this is a closed loop. We will concentrate our attention only on the boiler part. So, on the boiler part, if you look at it, if you look at only the boiler, now whether the boiler is an open system or closed system? No, it is not a closed system. It is an open system now. See, now because the system is no longer the complete loop, the system is only the boiler. So, now this becomes my control surface this becomes my control volume and now if you look at this control volume we find that certain mass is entering this control uh, surface into the control volume and certain mass is leaving this control surface so there is a mass transfer as well as energy transfer okay so when there is a mass transfer as well as energy transfer the boiler now becomes a open system open system right Similarly, the turbine, if you look at the turbine, you'll find that there is a mass transfer across the system boundary and there is also an energy transfer. So, steam turbine a component as a component is an open system. So, similarly, your pump is open system, a condenser is open system. So, this is very interesting. What is happening here is your condenser is open system, pump is open system, boiler is open system and turbine is open system. However, if you are linking them in a cycle, thermodynamic cycle, then that cycle, that thermodynamic cycle, and or this integral power plant, this integral power plant or a heat engine is now a closed system. And closed system, and what does this do? This would convert the heat to work. This would convert the heat to work. And that is why it's called as a heat engine, because heat engine is a device which would convert the heat to work by operating in a thermodynamic cycle. So this is an interesting case, which will be looking in the higher studies also, uh, where you need to apply the laws of thermodynamics for analyzing such kind of systems. The third example I'm taking in order to understand the system surrounding approach, 
and in order to look at the energy flows is the schematic diagram of a refrigerator a refrigerator or a heat pump it has got two heat exchangers one is called as an evaporator and other is called as a condenser so when there is a heat exchanger it means that there is certain heat transfer across the system boundary in the evaporator and in the condenser now what happens in this evaporator is the heat is transferred to the refrigerant in the evaporator okay so there is a heat transfer there is an energy transfer from the surrounding to the system from the surrounding to the system. So looking at only at the evaporator, the evaporator would give as an open system and in this open system there is a transfer of heat from the surrounding to the system. Okay, what about the transfer of mass? Yes, there is also a transfer of mass. We will find that the refrigerant is entering this evaporator and the refrigerant is leaving this evaporator. So the evaporator would behave as an open system. Similarly about the compressor. What is happening in the compressor? Compressor, you know that you require some electricity to operate this compressor. There is a motor attached to the compressor and that motor would consume electricity. It means that work is being supplied from the surrounding to the system. Electricity is consumed. That is what we call in layman's language. Okay, Electricity is consumed by the compressor. That is a layman's language. But in practice, what it means is that it, it means that work is being supplied by the surrounding to the system that is how you talk in thermodynamics so the work transfer from the surrounding to the system and what about the mass transfer yes there is a mass transfer in mass is entering the compressor the mass gets compressed and this mass is exiting this compressor so, so again this behaves as a open system same thing about condenser where the refrigerant gets condensed so when it gets condensed the heat is rejected it is rejected, it means that there is a transfer of heat from the system. Now, now the system is a condenser from the system to the surround. It is rejected by the condenser to the surrounding, and it is again an open system because there is a mass in the refrigerant is getting into the condenser, and the condenser is coming out of the condenser. So there is a mass out. So there is a mass transfer across this condenser, it becomes an open system. Same thing about an expansion device where there is a mass transfer mass transfer okay so this we need to clearly understand that all these components evaporator compressor condenser expansion devices they behave as an open system now if you connect them in this order if you connect them in this order then this as a cycle as a thermodynamic cycle or as a complete thermodynamic system now this becomes my system boundary if i take this as an integral system so the system boundary would be enclosing this and all the components and if you look at this then you'll find that no refrigerant is entering that system boundary okay so this because if it's a thermodynamic cycle if you take an enclosure enclosing uh, enclosing all these four components then you'll find that there is no refrigerant entering the system there is no mass transfer into the system so this now becomes a closed system why it is a closed system and not an isolated system because though there is no mass transfer you'll find that still there is an energy transfer there is an energy transfer to the evaporator there is an energy transfer away from the condenser and there is an energy transfer in the form of work to the compressor so this becomes now a closed system where there is an energy transfer that is a heat transfer in the evaporator and the condenser and there is a work transfer in the compressor so this we need to clearly understand so what we are trying to understand is how to look at the system how to look at the energy flows how to look at the direction of the energy flow whether the direction is from the system to the surrounding or from the surrounding to the system generally when you are there when there is a transfer of work from the surrounding to the system we call it as a negative work okay because then it becomes a work consuming device but if your work is being produced as in the case of engines then it becomes a positive now from a integrated perspective now i have drawn a schematic of a heat engine and a schematic of a refrigerator or a heat pump so if you concentrate your attention here now what you are finding is that in the heat engine you are transferring certain heat Q1, you are rejecting certain heat Q2, and you are getting certain work. So, what is a heat engine? 
So heat engine, for example, your petrol engine or diesel engine, what it is doing? There is a heat transfer. When is the heat being transferred? When the fuel is being burned, when the fuel is being burned during combustion, okay, that is an exothermic reaction, so it has been transferred. And when is the heat ejected? The exhaust gases <coughs> are let out to the atmosphere, exhaust gases are let out to the atmosphere, and also there is a jacket water cooling. Okay, so all this would contribute to the heat rejection by the engine, and you are getting certain work at the shaft work. So the engine behaves as a uh, the IC engine, the petrol engine or a diesel engine. It behaves as a heat engine. Similarly, the power plant is also a heat engine because what is happening that you are supplying certain heat to the boiler. You are rejecting the heat in the condenser, and you are getting a net work output from the turbine. From the turbine. Okay. So the heat engine. I discussed two examples. One is a petrol engine, or also diesel engine, and I. Taken an example of thermal power plant or a steam power plant, which is also a work producing device. So, heat engine produces work when there is a consumption of heat. Okay, there is a transfer of heat to the heat engine, and the output of the heat engine is a work. So, it's called as a heat engine. Now, what is a refrigerator or a heat pump? What is happening there? In the refrigerator or heat pump, you are consuming the, the device is consuming certain work, it's a work consuming device. And why is this work consumed? So this work is consumed for pumping the heat, for pumping the heat from a lower temperature, from a lower temperature to the higher temperature, to the higher temperature. Okay. So this we'll see more clearly when we study the first law of thermodynamics. But now we are looking at only the energy flows, and this is a very useful concept that if you are able to identify the energy flows, then the analysis of a complicated devices like a thermal power plant or a refrigerator or a air conditioner becomes pretty easy by formulating a model, a thermodynamic model. And this thermodynamic model starts with, when you are defining a thermodynamic model, you start by defining or identifying a thermodynamic system, start by looking at the energy flows across the system and start by uh, writing an energy balance to it. So what is an energy balance? So the energy balance which we will be studying in the next lecture is the nothing but the first law of thermodynamics. First law of thermodynamics. Okay. So in the next class, we, because now we have learned the concept of system, surrounding, open system, closed system, isolated system. We have talked about the energy flows and we have also looked at certain examples of thermal systems namely the heat engine and the heat pump. We would now be interested in understanding, analyzing these systems 